उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पमीए पूरण पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्पतरु पारस चिंता मनी चार संत समानते एक नहीं मैं मन मा कर विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे गणेशा महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी भगवान स्वामी नारायण पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूज्य पाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोरीज माया हम बोल जय स्वामी नारायण वी वॉल प्ले द गेम बिफोर वीव ऑल प्ले द गेम बिफोर वर इन अ स्विमिंग पूल एर रीना with our friends and there all our friends have gathered to swim that whole day now some of our friends don't know how to swim so we decide to stay in the shallow end of the pool so no one drowns or gets in trouble while in the shallow end we start to splash water on each other each other's faces to rouse a game to occur we play this for 5 minutes 10 minutes until the game goes stale and then one of our friends takes out some coins some quarters some dimes from his swimming trunks and throws it into the pool now all the coins disperse and the game the objective of the game is to retrieve the coins from the bottom of the pool and whoever can collect the most coins wins that's the game so all of our friends are really excited and they all dive in at one time to retrieve the coins a lot of splashing occurs all of them dive all at once in unison and the game is great it goes on and on for hours and every time we come to the swimming arena we always play this game now the following year you and your family go on a cruise in the caribbean sea in the south there you're leaning over the railing of the ship admiring the ocean the waves the waves are hitting the ship smashing against the ship but you know you're not worried because nothing is going to happen to the ship the ship is waving back and forth and all of a sudden a clumsy fat man comes and accidentally shoves you from the back you fall right over and everything in your pocket your cell phone the room to your keys pen pocket diary and a little bit of money falls out everything is dispersed all over the deck now as you start to gather all your things the man apologizes to you saying i'm so sorry i'm so sorry for doing this he apologizes you say no worries don't worry it was an accident i understand completely Well, as you're gathering all your belongings, your cell phone, your pen, your pocket, you see some change that's missing. And you come to the conclusion that some of that change, the quarters, dimes, must have fallen overboard into the ocean. So the man also notices this. And he says, I can repay you for this. But you say, it's not anything to worry about. it's only a couple cents but after you collect everything and the man apologizes and walks away again you look over the railing of the ocean and look underneath to the ocean and you tell the ocean 
I'll sit this one out. I'll sit this game out. That's what you tell the ocean. Why? Because at that time, we were in the swimming pool. We were capable of retrieving those coins from about three to four feet of water. But those same coins, when they fell into the ocean, you told the ocean that I don't want to play the game anymore because you're not capable of retrieving those coins from the ocean. The ocean is too deep for you. Now, there's three reasons behind this, you think. The first reason is the lack of capability. We are not capable of diving underneath the ocean to retrieve those coins because the human body cannot withstand that pressure. You would die in about 200, 300 feet of water. For example, suppose your grandfather was hospitalized in the ICU and he's in the ICU and you're waiting in the waiting room across from the ICU. Now, across from the ICU, you're sitting there and right across is the operation theater for the surgeons. From the operation theater, a doctor, a surgeon comes out and he calls you over. Because of his striking, striking figure and you see him as a surgeon, such an idol in society, you walk over to him and you ask him, yes, doctor. The doctor calls you into the operation theater room and before you enter the room, there's a small room and he gives you new scrubs and he tells you to change into these new clothing, put a mask on, put goggles on, wash your hands and enter into the operation theater. You think at first that, why is he telling me this? But because of his striking figure and because you admire him, you do exactly what he says and you enter the operation theater. There's about two nurses and two other assistant doctors doing the surgery. As you walk closer, you see that there is open heart surgery going on on this old man's body. The doctor takes a knife from the plate and gives it to you. He tells you, I cannot perform this surgery anymore. So please, finish the surgery for me. Right there, what do you think? Of course, I'm not capable of doing this because I'm not a surgeon. I have not studied anything. Immediately, you leave and walk away from the situation. But the whole moral is that you're not capable of performing the surgery. That's why you walked away. Number two, the money is not valuable enough for you to go that deep into the water and retrieve the money. Compared to your life, the money has no value. And number three, it's too much of a risk for you. Meaning, why would you take the risk of your life for a small game like this? By now, five minutes into my lecture, you're probably wondering, why am I telling you this? What is the reason that I am giving you this information? What does it have to do with religion? What does it have to do with Bhagwan Swaminarayan? Well, this was just an example for all of you. The principle behind this example is that just like how we are trying to realize God, our goal is to attain God. Our goal is to join communion with God. We cannot do this simply by ourselves. And if we do try to attain God by ourselves, it would be like diving into the ocean to retrieve those coins. There is little possibility that you'll survive. There is little possibility that you would find those coins 
and retrieve them from the ocean. On the other hand, if one takes refuge underneath the Ekantik Sadpurush, or the God-realized saint, and then tries to attain God, it would be like retrieving coins from an ocean, or a pool, which is only three or four feet of water. How easy is it? Everyone enjoys the game, and also you can retrieve as many coins as you want. This is the principle behind my topic. Today, I want to talk about refuge underneath the Ekantik Sadpurush. Just think, ever since we were in school, first year, when we were in school, we took refuge underneath our teacher. How? We asked them, I don't know this equation. Could you help me out? They said, of course I can. That's what I'm here for. Just think, we take refuge underneath our parents. When we're young, until we're a young adult, food, clothing, money, expenses, shelter, they all provide it for us. So we have taken refuge underneath them. Just think, in college, we have a professor. He gives us guidance on how to become a better student and to graduate college with a good degree. And just think, after you graduate from college, you get a great job. But since you're new at that job, you don't know how to operate the machine or you don't know how to do your job. So your manager, you call your manager over and you ask for assistance and your manager helps you out. In our life, in our worldly life, we take refuge underneath these four elements of parents, teachers, professors, and managers. Yet, we're, forget we're forgetting one element in the spiritual world, which is the God-realized, self-realized, ekantic saint. We have not taken refuge underneath him. Due to that, we're unable to re retrieve those coins that are so valuable for our liberation. And off of this subject, there's a watch number, Gadada Vartal, 10th chapter, Sri Jamarad says that there's a question asked by a devotee by the name of Bhagubi. He asked, How can the Jeev attain liberation? Meaning, how can this soul, how can it attain liberation? There is many, many ways shown in the Vachnamrut. But out of all the ways shown, Bhagwan mentions by doing bhakti, one can attain liberation. Bhagwan shows that by having dharma bhakti, gnan virag, one can attain liberation. But moreover, the best way to attain liberation, by my perspective, is from this Vachnamrut. Now the question again is, how can the jiva attain liberation? Bhagwan says, God assumes an avatar in two forms, in the form of a king and in the form of a sadhu. Now, when he attains an avatar in the form of a king, there are certain characteristics he has. And when he attains an avatar in the form of sadhu, he has complete opposite characteristics from the king meaning he has no nonviolence. he practices each and every way to help others out. Now Bhagwan says further on in the Vachramrut that when God is not manifest on this earth, meaning physically in the human form, one should seek the refuge of the Sant who has the realization of God because the Jeev can also attain liberation through him. This is all I want to read to you. The question was, how can the Jeev attain liberation? Bhagwan says that there's two ways that God assumes an avatar. One is in the form of a king, one is in the form of a sant or a sadhu. After that, Bhagwan says, towards the end of the Vachramrut, that 
when Bhagwan is not manifest on this earth, physically, then one should take refuge, refuge underneath that God-realized saint. And through that saint, one can also attain liberation. Now we take refuge underneath an umbrella. When it's raining outside, we take an umbrella so we don't get wet. We take refuge underneath our clothes because when it's really cold outside, we wear clothes that are heavy so we stay warm. We take refuge underneath a bunker so that a tornado or gale force winds do not affect us or we do not die from them. In the same way, in religion, to take refuge underneath the Ekantik Satpurush is the most important element for one to attain God, for one to attain liberation, and also for one to become eternally happy. So all my examples are all going towards taking the refuge of that Ekantik Satpurush. But you're probably asking, what do I have to do? How can I do this? Sometimes it's difficult. You cannot find a saint. Sometimes you don't have contact with saints. Well, look, there's many ways. Refuge does not have to be something in the form of physical presence. It can also be verbally done. As long as that saint knows that you have taken refuge underneath him, as long as you have taken the Vratmans by his hands, you are under his refuge. So through listening to his katha, by following his words, these are all forms of refuge that one can take. Now, to make things easier for you, let me give you a small story. There was a herdsman who herded many, many goats. And one time, he was taking the goats to a far field, but he had to cross a jungle. Now, crossing this jungle, there was many, many goats. One of the goats' foot got stuck in a hole and got stuck there at that position. Now, the other goats or the herdsmen did not notice. So they kept walking and they completely just left that goat because they did not know. So the goat is stuck there. His foot is stuck there in the hole, waiting for someone to come for help. Now, soon it turns dark and the goat knows that in the jungle, there's many, many vicious animals that come to hunt. And the goat knows that it's the perfect meal for any animal. So the goat looks around in the surrounding area, trying to find some kind of help, some kind of shelter, some kind of refuge. And there, on its left, it spots a lion's paw, a lion's footprint. So it sits right down where it is and does not worry at all. After some time goes by, a, hy a group of hyenas come and they ask the goat, why aren't you scared? Every time you see us, you become scared. But this time, why aren't you scared? The goat raises its foot and shows that he is sitting in the refuge of the lion's footprint. So all the hyenas bow down and leave. Again, a group of tigers come. Same situation. They see the footprint. First they ask the goat, why are you still sitting here? You used to run away from us when you saw us, but you're still sitting here. The goat says, look whose refuge I'm taking. And he lifts his leg again and they, there they see the footprint of the lion. Many, many animals come. And the same answer the goat gives, I'm taking the refuge of the lion. Finally, the lion comes itself. 
And the lion asks that all these animals came and now I come. And still, why are you not afraid? I'm the king of the jungle. Why are you not afraid of me? The goat, with bold confidence, replies that I have taken your refuge. So I am not scared of anyone. And I know that no one will harm me. The lion becomes very happy and calls an elephant over and tells the elephant to get the lion's foot out of the hole. After the elephant does this, the elephant takes the goat back to its herd. In the same similar manner, the goat was encountered by many, many vicious animals. Yet, because it had the refuge of the lion's footprint, it was saved. In the same way, from this maya, from this illusion, from this worldly dream we see of nice cars and money and tasty food and nice clothing, everything we see, we can be saved by taking the refuge of the Ekantik Satpurush. So my message for all of you is that Yes, we do take refuge underneath simple things like an umbrella or like clothing or even like a bunker. Simple things. We take easy refuge on. Why? Because we know that our life is saved and we know that we'll be protected. In the same familiar ma fashion, our life in the form of spiritual life would be saved by taking the refuge of such a saint, by becoming the complete servant of him, by doing what he has said. And by doing this, we'll attain God, our ultimate and our final destination. So, this was my main message for all of you today. This is my lecture for this week. Now I would like to give it to Puja Rushivalab Swami, who would also be giving a lecture on bhakti today this puja ritual of swami वर्णिवेशरमणीय दर्शनम मंदहासरचिरानानाम्बुजम पूजितम सुरनरोतमेर मुदा धर्मनंदन महम विचिंतय श्री हरि कृष्ण महाराज ने जय सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी भगवान स्वामी नारायण Puja Guruji, all of the Santo and devotee, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. We are discussing about devotion from last from last some weeks. Now today, we are discussing about remembrance. First, we have discussed about Sravanam, then Kirtanam, and now today. We are going to discuss about Smaranam. 
What is Maranam? When we remember the form of God, remember the devotee of God, remember any past times or incidents from the life of God or any divine power of God, this all remembrance is called our devotion of our mind, means the remembrance of kind of devotion. We know that in the Vachanamrut, Bhagavan says in the third Vachanamrut, Gurudha, first chapter, one should remember every celebration, not only celebration, but in the celebration or festival, the form of God, the form of Sadhu, Brahmacharis, also devotees, and not only the, this, but one should also remember those place and all the atmosphere and all these things. This is what the commands of Bhagwan for us. But our mind as its nature, he always give us some question. And his best and foremost question is, why? Why should I remember all these things? It is not enough to me for remembering only the form of God. What is need of remembrance? All these things, the pastimes of Bhagwan, his devotee, his santo. Why? And Bhagwan knew already these things, our mentality, our attitude. And so he has given the answer in the same Vachanamrut. Bhagwan says, Duty should remember all these things, all the gatherings, all celebrations, festivals, all sadhus and devotees. Why? Because at the time of death, if by any how one forget the form of God and remember only worldly things, his desire or any other thing, but at the time, if any how one can remember even the sadhu of Bhagwan, devotee of Bhagwan, or any other incidents from the life of Bhagwan, then due to remembrance of such things one can automatically remember the form of God and attach his mind to the form of God and only due to this merit one can attain ultimate liberation. But without any incidents we cannot understand these things. Even though this is the words of Bhagwan, we cannot accept but let me see our real incidents. There was a poor boy in some village, in a remote village near Moody. Once upon a time in the Moody, in the Swaminarayan temple of Moody, Brahman and Swami had organized a big festival on grand level celebration and thousands and millions of peoples and many saints gathered in, those, in that festival to glorify the Bhagwan's divine personality. So knowing this about celebration the boy also went to enjoy the celebration. He don't know about Swami Narayan. Who is Swami Narayan? He did not know anything. But as all the other people of that village went to enjoy, participate in the celebration, the boy also went with those people. In the Moody, the boy enjoy all the other things 
he did not know anything about bhagwan and so naturally he had no any interest in katha and darshan of bhagwan in the temple and all other things but he had he was very he was very uh, he had de- desire to eat very delicious dishes of food so when he went into the kitchen for taking a prasad at the time he had seen what he saw he saw the scene before in his life he had never seen the scene of a huge piles of sweets and other food dishes food items after taking meal and after completing those celebration when he went back to the to his village on the way back he forget all other things but he cannot forget those piles of sweets and other food items not only this but after staying at his home and after so many years he remember one thing in his life and that is these piles of sweets in the mudi temple when his time of death is near at the time he also remember these things the piles of sweets and other food items he had no concern with bhagwan swami narayan he had never listen any other sadhu he had not put his own self in the company of sadhu but he has only this merit merit of remembering the celebrate not hold the celebration but only a small part of spe- celebration but due to his merits bhagwan at the time of his death came to bring him to his aksardham this is what the real incident no doubt we all think right now that we have no need to think this type of incidents or this this type of story of bhagwan or any other things what we have seen in any celebration or festival or any other sadhu or devotees because we ourselves is devotee of bhagwan we always follow his commands we always remember him while doing uh, while doing kirtan and all other rituals puja and other things so we have no need to do we have no need to remember bhagwan in this way like a poor boy but think by any how or any any how we have not remembrance at the time of death the form of god because the circumstances like that if we have an accident and by chance we cannot keep our remembrance our memory we have seen so many incidents in our relatives and any persons that one can after accidents forget all the memory so at the time if we have slight memory of any incidents of celebration if we remember any sadhu if we remember any devotee of bhagwan even if we remember the sign of our sect that is tilak chanlo then due to remembrance of such things we can have remembrance of bhagwan and due to this merit bhagwan automatically come uh, come before us and at the time we can at least satisfy in our mind in our heart to have a darshan of bhagwan 
but today most of us says we have no time because we have to go for learning we have to go for job we have to do any other activities throughout the day but we have no time to remember bhagwan but this type of devotion smaranam it doesn't concern with any time we need not require any special or extra time to remember the form of god because we can remember the form of god at the same time while we are doing any other activity but suddenly we also say how can it possible to remember the form of god while doing any activity just like while eating how can we remember the bhagwan just like any other activity like eating means walking driving the car doing a job computing or any other thing how can we remember the form of god but it is not our fault if we have study the vachanamrut were carefully then bhagwan had so us bhagwan had shown us the way explain the way to remember the form of god while doing any activity bhagwan says in the ninth vachana of the last chapter one can easily remember the form while doing any activity see just an example when you are driving your car you are on the way to your office you are way on to the uh, if you are kids or student then you may be in the car go to the school but at the time what are you doing you are not only mo- moving your steering of car your one attention is also on the pedal of accelerator and brake at the same time your eyes work to see what is in front of you whether the road is clean or not how far the another car before you not only this but the same eyes also do the another activity at the same time that is observance from the side mirror what is in rear of your vehicle at the same time if somebody is sitting bes- beside you then you may be talking with that person and if somebody ask you what are you doing then you say i am just driving the car but you are not driving only the car but you are doing so many other activities while driving the car similarly when we perform any activity in our life if we desire to remember the form of god at the same time we can remember the form of god while doing any activity but for that we should do practice without practice nobody can attain this devotion of smaran even without practice one cannot cannot earn money then how can it possible to earn the divine pleasure of bhagwan the another method is taught by a bhagwan to us how to remember the form of god bhagwan says in the 38 vachana of the gorada first chapter bhagwan says 
these divine actions and incidents should be recalled in the following manner maharaja and the paramhansa held an assembly in this village in this manner puja was offered to maharaj in this manner and the discourses took place in this manner etc so whenever we attend any assembly any religious assembly or any festivals in which not only bhagwan was there but santo and other devotees also take part in the assembly or festival at that time it is not our duty only just to attend assembly and listen discourses but at that time we should also observe all the other things all the sadhus all the devotees all the schedule of the festival and all these things because bhagwan taught us how to remember the incidents of god while applying this method in our life in our practical life we can have remembrance of bhagwan while doing any activity when we go when we drive our car to our office mostly there is nobody beside us in the car at the same time think bhagwan is sitting beside me and just start to talk with him just as another person is sitting beside you and you are talking with him similarly just imagine that bhagwan is sitting beside you and you are driving the car but at the same time you may ask anything to bhagwan talk about anything to bhagwan this is what the method to remember the form of god means to keep god with us while doing any activity while in the kitchen we are making thar for bhagwan at the same time if we are alone in the kitchen then imagine that not only not i am not all alone in the kitchen bhagwan is also joined with me to prepare the meal i am rolling the roti and bhagwan is help me to making another items in not only this but while i am right now i am doing katha i am speaking something about bhagwan at the same time i should also remember that bhagwan is also present over here just beside me and he is listening what i am speaking this is what some methods to remember the form of god now today is day of holi and ho- after holi we have a rang- dudeti in india what is in dudeti means rangotsav what is in rangotsav this is known as color festival if you add some color in the source of water from a uh, 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 source of water of your house what happen think whenever you open the tip whether in the bathroom or in the kitchen you have a water but some different you have a colorful water why because in the source you have add some color similarly think the remembrance of incidents and past times of bhagwan is like different color different past times is different color and when you pour it into your life into your all of into your day to day routine this is your activity the source of your 
source of your living and when you pour this color in the form of bhagwan's incidents into your life into your activity of routine then what happen you have colorful water just like in the kitchen and bathroom similarly in your all and all activity you have a divinity so today as we are celebrating this day as a holy and duality spraying colors on each other let us spray this color of bhagwan's incidents over ourselves let we try from today to remember bhagwan in this way so that our life our all activity become divine whenever we speak our world also sanctified with red color of bhagwan's incident whenever we listen our ears also become a colorful with the incidents of bhagwan another thing is that if we cannot understand cannot remember the incidents of bhagwan because we have not seen sri ji maharaj as face to face so how can we just merely by reading his incidents from the scripture and listening incidents from the katha how can it possible to remember us forget the thing take an example there was fisherman and we know what is his duty what is his job his dirty job is to fetch fishes from the sea or river once upon a time brahman and swami met such one fisherman and gave him some updesh give him some teaching of bhagwan swami narayan and said and instruct him stop to this fishing then fisherman was not much bad so he requested swami ji swami ji i have no any other occupation how can i fill my stomach how can i earn money without this occupation then all of the things swami says him that if you forget this business bhagwan will give you money anyhow then after fisherman asked brahman and swami what is my duty what is my another job then brahman and swami explain him to recite the name of bhagwan Brahmanand Swami said him speak Swami Narayan say Swami Narayan but fisherman cannot understand what is Swami Narayan and so he cannot even speak the word Swami Narayan so he asked Swami ji i cannot remember this word and i think i cannot recite this word every day so give me another another any job then swami said if you cannot understand cannot remember this name don't worry you just remember my big stomach my pot belly then fisherman said okay that i can remember all of whole out uh, all of my life and at the last time when his date is near gunadana swami and bhagwan swami naran himself went to bring the swisher man to aksardham he has no any merit in his life but he has only one thing that is remembrance of gunad uh, brahmanan swami's pot belly 
Similarly, if we we cannot remember any incidents of Bhagwan's life, if we cannot remember the words of Bhagwan, if we cannot remember divine powers of Bhagwan, it means glory of Bhagwan, but still, if we remember any God-realized saint, like our Pujya Guruji, Due to this merit of remembrance of Pujji Guruji, we can easily fetch Bhagwan to us. It is not Bhagwan fetching us, but we fetch Bhagwan to us. Because we have merit to remember his dear most saint. And if we cannot do this, then what what is the meaning of our life? What is the meaning of our spiritual life? If we cannot remember either Bhagwan or his another form in this world, that is Sadhpurus. So, from today, let me enjoy Rangotsav by spraying different colors in the form of different incidents of Bhagwan and his Sadhu in our all activities. So that while we doing any activity, we have remembrance of Bhagwan automatically. Jai Swami Narayan. Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hari Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Hari Krishna Maharaj Nijay.